I'm John Walker, and I'm chairman and uh, one of the founders of Zenf Sound Innovations. I was born in Houston. Uh, my father and grandfather worked in the oil refineries, so we lived in towns where there were oil refineries. Uh, at some point, we moved to the St. Louis area, and that's where I went to high school and grade school. I had the great fortune of, on the same block that we lived on, um, was one of Rachmaninoff's two piano students. He only had two. So he died in 1943, and it was Gina Bachauer and Ruth Slonzinska. And Ruth lived on the same block and was the same age as my parents. So they were good friends with each other. Her husband taught at the university, my dad, you know, and so on. And I had the opportunity to take piano lessons with her. We would sit in lessons, and, and she would give me pieces to work on, and I wasn't much into practicing. <laughs> I was a freshman in college, and, and she'd say, no, John, look, here's how Mr. Rachmaninoff would have played this. And she would sit and play it, and she'd say, now go work on it. You go, you go learn to do it that way. And I thought, I don't want to practice that hard. I, I don't want to be you know, this great concert pianist, but I sure would like to hear him play again. And that was really the seed for our present company here at Zenf. Uh, what does it take to be able to sit in the room and hear Rachmaninoff himself play again live, even though he passed away in 1943? And we're now able to do that. We invented a new term for what we did because there wasn't a really an easy way to explain it. And that term is, we call it reperformance. And what that means is we have a description of everything that happened in the original recording, at the original moment it was made. And we're able to then render that again, to hear it again through live instruments and virtual instruments and robotics and all kinds of things in three dimensions. And um, it's, you weren't there for the original performance, but you're here for the re-performance. The hardware came from Japan with no manual. <laughs> Essentially, you know, here's an HD TV, in this case it was an HD piano, and uh, no guidance at all as to how it worked internally and what the codes meant. And we spent a year kind of trying to figure out uh, what it is that, what, what that meant. A at the same time, realizing we also needed to build our, essentially, lab space. And the lab space is what we're sitting in now. And that lab space had to be temperature and humidity controlled because we needed to run experiments on real instruments with real humans and then come back and measure the same thing and get the same answer the same back the next day. And then there was the third step, which is we need to understand what humans did. What was natural behavior for someone who played an instrument? And so for years and years, we'd have live recitals in here. You know, some great pianist was coming to town, we'd say, hey, come for an extra day early, we'd like you to have a private recital. Every one of the college piano professors here in town, they've said, you know, John, I'm giving a recital on Sunday, can I come on Wednesday night and invite 20 people just to get through the nerves? And we would do that and collect all the data for how they performed. And so we got to build up a base of what it meant in very microscopic detail. Uh, you know, what are the gestures? How do people move? How do people push pedals and keys and all these things? And, and to kind of deeply understand what it meant when they played. We're so used to hearing music reproduced in very poor ways. And yet we know what it would be like to have been in the room as that performer played originally and now we can cause that experience to occur, and the reaction to the music's totally different. It's not the, oh, I recognize this tune and I tap my toe. It's like, my God, I've got goosebumps crawling up my back and down my arms, and it's the, I'm there. Mm -hmm.